this final section here is what I'm going to call the best of the rest, let's say. I'm not going to give you the full game by game of every Big 12 matchup here because I don't want to be doing two hours of these videos every week when really I can only give you real in-depth information and analysis on two or three of these games. So I'm just going to run through the rest of the Big 12 here and I'll talk a little bit on specific points where I have them. Elsewhere in the Big 12, TCU beats Arkansas Pine Bluff 39-7. to The reason this stands out to me is because TCU, man, I feel like they're still trying to solve their problem at quarterback. They're two quarterbacks, 16 of 23 for Duggan, 165 and a touchdown. Delton goes 10 for 22 for 119. I just don't feel like they really have everything figured out. TCU looks like a team that fell from grace suddenly and is now really searching for answers. But I believe in their coach to get things sorted out within the next couple of years. But they're they're going to be, I think, down for a minute. Elsewhere, Kansas State beats the dog snap. Snap? Dog snap? Dog. I don't want to say dog S because I don't want to get demonetized unjustly. But uh, the dog snot, let's say, out of Nichols State, 49 to 14. Doesn't even bear mentioning. It's Nichols State. Baylor trounces Stephen F. Austin, 56 to 17. Baylor, at some point, I know you're not very good right now. I know that the whole investigation thing, rightfully so, tore your program down, sent Art Bryles out the door and all that. But good gravy man i would hope you would learn your lesson about scheduling tough opponents the one year you did win the big 12 as co-big 12 champion you couldn't even do that part right did they win it another year they might have won it with rg3 as well but when you were co-big 12 champions with tcu your pathetic strength of schedule kept you out of any meaningful bowl game let alone the playoff so i would hope at some point you learn your lesson and start booking better opponents than stephen f austin Texas Tech trounces Montana State. Again, go figure. 45-10. to 10. West Virginia with former Oklahoma quarterback Austin Kendall at the starting position. Adam Proctor, looking at you. One of the P1s of this case, of this Big 12 talk. Uh, Austin Kendall for the Mountaineers. Now, they escaped 20-13 to 13 against, man, who is this that they were facing? James Madison? I didn't even know they had a football team, honestly. James Madison... Goes into West Virginia, and Austin Kendall goes 27 of 42 for 260, 6.2 a pop, two touchdowns, only sacked once. Here is my immediate concern. I remember West Virginia having a damn good running game last year, and yet I'm looking at these rushing totals seeing Petaway, 9 for 20. What the hell? 2.2 yards? No touchdowns? McCoy, 11 for 11. Bro... What? One yard a carry with a long of five? Sinkfield, one for three. Austin Kendall himself, three for nothing. Bro, what is happening? West Virginia had a really good running game last year. I know your head coach went to Houston, but what is happening here that you have fallen so far? No wonder you barely beat James Madison. Kendall's numbers are nice. They're not eye-popping in any regard. They're kind of what I would have expected him to do uh, in relief, honestly, at OU. Because I don't think he was ever going to, had he stayed, beat Hurts or in the upcoming class. He's already here, but he's currently the third string guy, Spencer Rattler. Mordecai, maybe. I'm not I'm not as sold on Tanner Mordecai as OU seems to be. Receiving-wise, Bush had four catches for 74 yards and a touchdown with a long of 41. That's nice. Simmons, 5 for 58. James, three or 6 for 32. Just a very balanced approach. Nothing, I mean, I know you scored 20 points, so you're not going to have monster numbers. I'm concerned a little bit about West Virginia's offense that was very dangerous and dynamic last year. It doesn't look that impressive, even though I'm glad to see Austin Kendall getting a little bit of burn after being a backup at OU for like three years. Also, Iowa State in triple overtime at home. This is in Ames. Needs triple overtime against Northern Iowa to escape 29-26. How bad was this game? How bad was this game? 
We went to triple overtime and settled it 29-26. <laughs> I don't even think stats carry in this regard. Purdy, 30 of 41, 278, two touchdowns. Cool. Lang, 14 carries, 60 yards. Crony, 13 for 56. Hall, 11 for 47. So balanced rushing attack, but not a lot. I see 21 points here. So then somewhere else they got other points to get to 29. That's an odd number to get to with three touchdowns. But regardless, man, that is not a very strong. You won. You did the minimum. But that is not a very strong first foot to put forward if you're hoping to do anything. And they're the, they were the number 21 team in the country going into the week. There's no way, no way Iowa State stays in the top 25 despite winning. The Les Miles era in Kansas started with a win over Indiana State 24-17. Now, I think Les Miles, I don't think by any means he's done I know he was gone for a minute after LSU, but Les Miles has had success elsewhere. He was he was Oklahoma State for a while and had some success. And, you know, he just came back to the Big 12, but he went to Kansas is the problem. Let's look at the stats here for Les Miles' crew. Stanley goes 20 of 29 for 241, two touchdowns, no picks, sacked twice. Running back Herbert goes 17 for 88. 5.2 a carry. Did lose a fumble. All three running backs lost a fumble. Wow. Williams also 9 for 34. Stanley, oh, that's the quarterback, sorry. Uh, 8 for 19. Negative 19, excuse me. Interesting. I guess that's his two sacks. But you had eight rushing attempts, so very strange. How much yardage were you losing? Uh, and he also fumbled. Receiving, you had a big day from Parchment. 8 for 121. That's a big day for him. Uh, Charlotte had six for 79 as well. I'm less miles is going to make Kansas better. Kansas has been an utter laughing stock and a dumpster fire throughout recent years, but I'm not saying he's going to make them good. It's not going to be like that weird year around 2007 or eight, where suddenly Kansas was the number two team in the country. If you can remember that at one point, it's not going to be like that. I don't think, but he'll make them respectable in a top 25 team. I believe. Uh, yeah, not much else to say on that. Kansas holds off Indiana State by seven points. And as I referenced earlier in a different video, because I'm breaking these into three parts, uh, OU, excuse me, OSU, battled OSU. Oklahoma State goes to Oregon State and more or less throttles the Beavers. That's what they look like, Beavers. 52 to 36. Oklahoma State always puts up big numbers. Uh, Sanders, new quarterback, goes 19 of 24 for 203. I take that back. Not very big numbers, at least passing yardage-wise. Three touchdowns, sacked once. Hubbard, the running back. Woo, there's your big day right there. Good Lord. Hubbard, your running back, goes 26 for 221, 8.5 a pop and three touchdowns along a 53. Sanders, the quarterback, also adds another 13 carries for 109 to 8.4 a pop and along a 30. He's trying to be Jalen Hurts. Like Jalen Hurts, he had three touchdowns. I looked up at Hubbard's stats there and started to attribute the three rushing touchdowns with the quarterback, but uh, not bad, man, not bad. I mean, you got 300 total yards out of your quarterback if you're Oklahoma State, and you showed the versatility. He looks like he could probably be a poor man's Jalen Hurts at this point, so interesting matchup when that comes around. Elsewhere, you had Wallace go five for 92 receiving. Two touchdowns, 18.4 yards a pop. Wolf go four for 41. And yeah, nothing else really jumps out. Time of possession was very even. Total yardage, Oklahoma State gets the edge. Passing yards, Oregon gets that edge. Oklahoma State, man, 352 rushing yards is pretty nice. Pretty nice in this case. This game was pretty even, actually, all things considered. Oregon State actually had more total plays as well. So a pretty even match there. It's just Oklahoma State knows how to finish off and cap off drives with touchdowns. So interesting first week of the Big 12. I'm actually looking more forward to next week. I'm I'm not certain yet if every week I'm going to preview the upcoming schedule for the Big 12. I certainly will do it when there's big, meaningful games. But like next week, you got Oklahoma hosting South Dakota. Pass. 
I'm not going to preview that game. That's not even anything to really talk about. Bowling Green will be at Kansas State. West Virginia goes to Mizzou. That's an interesting game, but neither team is ranked, so eh. Mizzou got upset in their first game. Uh, UTSA at Baylor. Eh. Coastal Carolina at Kansas. <laughs> McNeese State at Oklahoma State. The big one, the one that I will probably preview next week. And, hey, credit to Texas. They're the only team that gave us a good matchup in week two in the Big 12. LSU goes to Texas, number six at number 10. That will be a good matchup. It might be, you know, I'll preview that one game. I'll do a video Thursday previewing that one game for the Big 12 because I am interested in that. I will be watching every minute of that game Saturday night. Uh, And then Texas Tech is hosting UTEP. Yeah. Only one good game. But yes, interesting first week of the Big 12. OU and Texas, the only two teams that really had any kind of noteworthy thing at all from week one. Looks like Texas will be the only one really carrying that of note in week two. But we're going to do this. We're going to run this back every Monday. I'm going to give you probably two or three videos like this where I talk about the standout games and then kind of uh, all the rest notes like this one. And then Thursdays, not every Thursday, but... I'll try and do it somewhat regularly. I will preview significant games from the upcoming week. Again, I don't want to give a rundown of everything because some of these I can't preview. I I couldn't tell you anything about McNeese State at Oklahoma State other than it's at Oklahoma State, and I know a little bit about Oklahoma State's setup, obviously. So we'll pass on that. And in the meantime, hang tight, guys. We'll be back as I stumble over my words abruptly at the very end of the video, oddly. We will be back. Just remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.